I am late to the game. I think every car reviewer on the planet has already weighed in on the C8 Corvette. It's strange, but for some reason, I haven't had a chance to review this thing yet. Good news though, the powers conspiring to keep me out of Chevy's mid-engine Corvette have magically disappeared. Ain't life grand. So we're gonna make a quick video while I scratch the C8 off my checklist, and maybe we'll learn something along the way. And you know what? Sharing really is caring. How about we let the guy on the other side of the camera get first shot? Mike, the keys are yours. Mike Danger is KBB's videographer slash editor, and as a hardworking, massively talented dude, he deserves a spin in the C8. Ideally a metaphorical, non-literal spin. First though, here are a few reminders of what makes the eighth generation Corvette so special. Obviously engine position ranks high. Unlike every Corvette prior, the C8 has its engine behind the cockpit, improving rotational inertia and dynamic weight distribution for zazzier performance. As for power, the 6.2-liter V8 produces an ample 490 horsepower. Increase both the horsepower and torque figures by five if you get the optional performance exhaust. The V8's output is routed to the rear wheels via an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. And with the Z51 package's shorter final drive ratio, the Corvette will zap from static to 60 in under three seconds. If you didn't know, that's quick. That final drive ratio also gives the Z51 a top speed of 184 miles per hour. If that's somehow not fast enough for you, the standard car will do 194. Despite slotting the engine in the center, the Corvette is still weirdly practical. Between its front and rear trunks, there are 12.6 cubic feet available. I'm told the vet can hold two golf bags. I don't golf, but for those who do, congrats. Lastly, the C8's value proposition is absurd. Base price is just under 59 grand for the coupe. Tack on an extra $7,500 for a convertible like our tester here. If you're curious, this exact car has about 17 grand worth of options. Total price, $83,475 plus destination charges. Funny story, I attended the Corvette C8 event and when they announced the base price, I literally gasped. <gasps> So the C8 is powerful, its engine lives where Lamborghini puts theirs, and the base price is gasp-inducingly cheap. That is a strong premise, but what does Mike Danger think? I'm not gonna lie, I love this car. I love the convertible version of this car. My dad used to have an 84 Corvette, but this isn't the 84, not by any means. And I wanna thank Micah for giving me this opportunity to ride in this car. It's almost like a motorcycle on four wheels. I love it. Way to spread the love, Micah. <laughs> okay, it's not surprising, but Mike likes the C8 Corvette, and rightly so. Though I should intervene with some criticism, though the interior fitment and material quality is leaps and bounds beyond previous Corvettes, this linear button arrangement is a f travesty. Yeah, no, I'll stand by that. Having to scan 16 inches of controls while hurtling down the freeway is just plain silly. More positively though, the cabin offers lots of room, even for Mike, who is six foot four. Oh hey, you know who else who hasn't driven the C8 Corvette? My friend and Kelly Blue Book co-host, Lynn Woodward. Lynn, go make some memories. Oh, she got, got it! <laughs> so this is my first time sitting in the Corvette C8. I'm gonna take it for a little spin. I got about a minute to tell you what I think. So the first impression I get is how absolutely planted the C8 feels on the road. It's got the mid-engine setup, so the way that the car rotates around that center point really feels solid, really feels secure, gives the driver a really nice sense of balance. So this Corvette has about 500 horsepower under the hood, 495 to be exact, and off the line. 
<laughs> Dude, you get, I mean, honestly, you get up quick in this thing, holy cow. <laughs> So I really like how the engine sounds. Sounds even better when you've got the convertible. Uh, it's not as good as the Lexus LC500 convertible, but this one still has a nice little growl to it. The Corvette C8 will put a huge smile on your face without making a huge dent in your wallet. Woo! So finally, the sports car for the people is in the hands of the people. All right. Yeah, I might have guessed Lynn would like the C8 too. It's not likely you'll find a base Corvette on a dealer lot, but if you did, it would include a limited slip differential, smart key access, a range of drive modes, and an eight inch infotainment system. Higher trims add things like Bose premium audio, fancier interior appointments, these $1,500 GT2 bucket seats, seat heating and ventilation, an adaptive suspension, a front curb camera, and a front nose lift. And based on the Corvette's ride height, that nose lift is $1,500 well spent. For maximum Corvette enjoyment though, the Z51 performance package is a must. It adds an electronic limited slip differential, a performance exhaust, improved engine cooling, plus upgraded brakes, suspension, and Michelin Pilot summer tires for a not outrageous $5,000. As noted, our car sports the $7,500 retractable hardtop, which can be lowered in about 16 seconds at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. The Corvette convertible also includes a retractable rear window for top-up ventilation or top-down wind management. I like that the hardtop takes up zero cargo space versus the coupe, but it does cover the engine and from the driver's seat, the open air view is essentially the same as when you remove the coupe's roof panel. That said, wind management with the top down is excellent. I would happily drive exactly like this from LA to Texas. While I'm at it, here are a few other random observations. The square steering wheel should offer improved gauge viewability, but from my ideal driving position, it still cuts off the top of the display. The brake-by-wire pedal feels wonderful underfoot, and it's very easy to get the right amount of deceleration you want. No braking complaints here. Uh, ding. Fuel economy remains a weird strong suit for the Corvette. You cannot buy a manual transmission, but if you want to rev the engine at random passers-by, pulling both paddles activates short-term neutral. Vroom, vroom. Speaking of the dual clutch transmission, it delivers awesome fast shifts in motion, but it lacks the velvety smoothness of a traditional automatic when you're moving through a parking lot at creep speeds. And yes, creep speed is the only speed I drive. Oh, and this is a weird one. In motion, the turn signal is barely audible. So if you see a C8 Corvette with an overactive turn signal, the driver's just probably listening to Bachman Turner Overdrive. If you're shopping top tier performance cars, you might entertain the Audi R8, Acura NSX, Porsche 911, or maybe something truly exotic from Lamborghini or Ferrari. And hey, if you've got the money, go for it. Though my pragmatic side struggles with opportunity cost. If you buy a Corvette instead, you could apply tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to other purposes like retirement planning, travel, whenever that's a thing again, or outrageous tips for the food service industry. Not to get too highfalutin with this review, but the C8 Corvette provides a nice metaphor for life. I've heard some folks lament the Corvette's new character. It's too dignified. It's forgotten where it came from, that kind of thing. But I'm not one to chastise personal development. Change is inevitable and often wonderful. More than that, Chevy has done something special by lowering the bar of access for elite supercar ownership. To me, power is fun, but it's more fun when you share it.